I've got something to tell you. I went to the most expensive and elusive restaurant in London. How did it go? Well, stay tuned. Hi all and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a little review on the Sketch restaurant in London. I recently went there and I wanted to share my experience with you for anyone interested or if you just like to hear about restaurants. So I booked the Sketch restaurant in advance. You need about four to six months to make sure that your booking is secure. You can't just make a reservation close to the date. So if you are traveling into London, then I recommend that you pop onto the website and book your reservation for the time that you'll be in London. What I love about the Sketch Restaurant website is that it is very interactive, it is a great UX experience, you can play little games, there's even an afternoon tea setting game and it is very vibrant and fun just like the restaurant. The Sketch Restaurant is located on 9 Conduit Street Mayfair within the Grade 2 listed townhouse designed by English architect James Wyatt in 1779. As the private residence of the MP Mr Robert Vine Following that, the building hosted a bizarre variety of societies and institutions that according to some accounts included a cyclist, balloonist and psychologist, as well as hosting the headquarters of the suffragette movement in the early 20th century. Designed by Gabin O'Keefe, the restaurant is decorated in shades of orange, silver and richly upholstered armchairs in purple and crimson. The opulent design has beautiful wallpapering, an ornate plasterwork ceiling and intricate bassimum de vie. The lecture room and library is Sketch's finest dining restaurant, awarded its first Michelin star in 2005, a second star in 2012 and then a third star in 2019. It is now one of eight restaurants in London to hold such a high tier of standard. It was rewarded five rosettes by the AA Restaurant Guide in 2012 and continues to retain its accolade today. One of the best things that people love about the Sketch restaurants is that they have a really good wine pairing and you can buy some of the finest wines by the glass. So there are five locations within the Sketch restaurant that you can dine at. So there is the three Michelin star restaurant which is the lecture room and library and this is the most popular form of dining at Sketch restaurant but then they also have have the parlor which is suitable for breakfast and lunch they have the glade and gallery they have the glade gallery which is where you would seek afternoon tea and dinner occasions and then they also have the east and bar pods which is exclusively a bar for some of the most exclusive champagne and wines in London what we will be focusing on today is the lecture room and library. This is the experience that I had the pleasure of going to and we'll get into the food details, how the service was and also would I recommend it for anyone wanting fine dining coming outside of London. When you enter the restaurant you are greeted by a host, they will take your coats and then when it is time to go upstairs you will be led by the host who will walk you up the stairs, you'll be greeted by a maid on the way which is all so lovely because they wear the traditional attire of how it was in the 17th century. Then the doors will open into the beautiful room which has two parts, the first entryway and then you also have the secondary room right at the back which is a little bit more private. Immediately when you walk in you'll be absorbed by all the decor, it is more is more. So it's a great location if you love your atmosphere to have a lot to look at during the night. When I sat down I noticed the tables were spongy and I thought this was such a great touch. I've never seen this at a restaurant before. So they have like a foam padding underneath the table and when you put your hands on there it just feels very soft. And it's just those little extra bits that you'll notice when you go to a restaurant of, of this quality. I have the menu here which was given after the dining experience and I'm going to use this to help explain all the food that I had on the night. The head chef for the Sketch restaurant is Daniel Stapti and he's been working at Sketch for a number of years. The hours of opening times are for lunch so you've got 12.30 to 1pm and then for dinner you have 6.30 to 7pm usually a later start and it goes right until late so it could be midnight one o'clock depending on how long it takes for the last person to finish eating 
I decided to go for the tasting menu and this just gives you all the greatest things to try when you're there and it is a lot of food so definitely come quite hungry because you will get to a point where you feel like you can't put anything else in so the first thing that comes to the table obviously after you've had your wines I can't remember which wine pairing that I had but I was drinking white wine because there was a lot of fish and some of the dishes I thought would just be better with white wine so that's what I opted for uh, the first thing that comes on the table is the foyer and this was really nice it was little bits and pieces very liquidy lots of flavor and a really good kind of expectation to set the tone of the type of food that you'll be eating we then moved on to hand dive scallops raw creme fraquette and oschietra caviar smoked sardine and granny smith apple really good combination of flavors definitely one for you if you're not afraid of new flavors we also had a camilleri condiment with quince paste and an radico tadivo and then there was a noyi prat prisli leek fondue potato gnocchi and razor clams quite a lot to start the event with all the little bits and pieces were sort of put on the table and the table is very large so you can take your time some of it is hot and some of it is cold so the best thing about that is that you can really start with a hot and then end up with a cold or sometimes it is best to work in a sort of system and the waiter that you have there will also tell you whether or not it's good to start with certain parts of the plate or whether or not you can just go as you please and they always do this for a reason because some dishes don't taste very good when they're mixed together and sometimes they can be a little bit off-putting when your palate mixes them together okay so that was the starters now we're going to move on to the secondary starters so we had a Roscoff onion and juniper berry agnolotti coffee and horn of plenty butter kep ice cream and clementine jelly very subtle not too sweet nothing is sweet on the menu you can definitely taste a lot of the berry in there and the bread that they also gave on the side was really great with all of these dishes so if you do keep it and you can sort of have it with a lot of the fish dishes especially if you kind of are not so used to the flavors okay then we have the pan seared gambaro rossi salsify with seafood duck for guar and flan reduced shellfish au jus. Duck is one of my favorite things to have at a restaurant. I absolutely love it, especially when they pair it with a certain type of sauce, and this was no disappointment. Two volette, delicate pumpkin and chestnut, squid with Lautrec garlic, shavings of tuba, magnetum, pico white truffles. Bit of a mouthful there. That was also really good. The truffle flavor was strong. I always look for truffle flavor when I go to restaurants. Sometimes it is underwhelming. Sometimes the truffle is not in season. So it's really good to have a potent truffle and you can really identify truffle when you go and get it fresh. It does taste really good. So this did not disappoint. I remember this very well. I was definitely really full at this point. I didn't think I could fit in anymore really hoping that was dessert next and I knew that it wasn't so this is when we moved over to the grilled Cornish sea bus with fresh herbs parmesan tuli commies pear celeriac and black sesame seeds and the bleu nater really good the fish tasted so good this was definitely one of my highlights I really love this fish it was presented so well and even though I was so 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 full I shoved it down and I really did enjoy it Okay, this was the main way and I was definitely really full at this point. So we had the roasted filet with Welsh roe deer, veal of home cured middle and white pork lard, red cabbage, marmalade, comfy kumquats, beetroot salad with persimmon, tamarillo sorbet and civit of shoulder, pineapple and oat brittle. Really good combination of flavors here. You can just see by the display how marvelous it looked and it definitely tasted really good as well. Okay now this is probably one of the stars of the show. I've never been to a restaurant that really goes this above and beyond for dessert. 
I do believe that this has a strong reason of why the Michelin stars have added up and just how grand this restaurant does desserts. So the desserts usually at some restaurants can be a little bit of an afterthought, not always, but for a lot of people who focus on the savory, if the chef is more savory focused, the dessert can sometimes be a little bit of an afterthought. Well, this was absolutely not true. They almost filled the table out with desserts so that you can choose which dessert you please and you don't have to eat all of it and you really don't have an excuse whether or not you didn't like the dessert because they had everything on the menu. So they call this dessert Pierre Gamier's Grand Dessert. There were so many things on the table. You can see in this footage I've put in here that it was just such a big spread. They had the sorbets, they had the chocolate, they had the nutty desserts. They had, they had cheesecake, they had carrot cake, they had everything. And it was all done so well. Obviously very little portions, which is really good at this time of the evening because you can't put a lot in. But there was just so many different parts and I really do think that this was one of the best things about the restaurant that evening. So definitely a combination of different things on the menu. It's inspired by Italian, inspired by a bit of French in there. There is definitely some Spanish food in there as well. And I just really thought that it was a great, well-rounded, lots of different cuisines all put in one. One of the best places I've been to in London and I just had to experience it. Three Michelin star, isn't that just grand? Not always you get to go to a three Michelin star and London has some of the finest restaurants that you can go to in the world. So it's definitely cool coming from Australia. I don't think there's any Michelin stars in Australia actually. We're not on the Michelin list. So it's really good to kind of come over to this side of the world and see some of the best regarded restaurants. By the way, I do think Australia should be on the Michelin list because we have some really great restaurants over there and I think we will absolutely kill it if we were on the Michelin star ratings. So the staff were super lovely all throughout the meal. They were always filling up the water as they should, filling up your wine and just super attentive when you go to the bathroom. Um, they will pull out your chair for you when you, when you come from the bathroom, they'll also pull it out. So it's just that little extra bit of service that you would expect from a restaurant of this standard. And then after we dined, we chatted a little bit about the decor, the designers that were involved in making this room happen. And yeah, really cool. One of the things I noticed about the paintings on either side of the wall, they had two which looked like a blank canvas on both sides of the wall. And on the left side, there was a portrait of a girl. And then on the right, there was a portrait of a boy, but you would think that it was just a minimalist white painting with texture. You wouldn't know that it was a portrait, but then the more you stared at it, the more you would realize. And apparently a lot of people who do come back to sketch to dine realize that they are portraits the second or third time. And in the room filled with so much texture, patterns, design, it's not the first thing that you notice. So yeah, that was really, that was really interesting as well about the decor. After we finished chatting, we descended downstairs and the concierge staff were talking to us as well, what we're going to do for the week and we're telling them we're going to go on holiday. And then the concierge staff was so lovely to just take me on a tour of the whole sketch restaurant. So it took me to all the different rooms. I got to see the themes in each of the rooms. I got to see where they did afternoon tea, which I'd still like to go back and have afternoon tea at the sketch restaurant. And then we went to a few of the bars. And then what I thought was really cool about the tour is there was a different set of bathrooms downstairs. One of the rooms is completely white with these egg shaped cocoons and they are bathrooms in there. And I thought this was so interesting. I went and I had a little look inside and they had the cleaning staff sort of like sweeping and cleaning around. It's really awesome. That room is very modern looking, but it's actually inspiration I think from the 60s. So. Really cool to have a look around as well at the whole restaurant because when you're in that one area you don't get to see it all so it was really cool to get shown around. Okay so the final verdict of this restaurant would I recommend you to go and visit this restaurant if you're not from London or if you're from London and you want to experience some of the finest dining experiences. 
I would say yes if you are someone who is open to flavors, if you're someone who likes a little bit more of that heritage look with the atmosphere, and someone who also likes a little bit of edge and contemporary design. A lot of the atmosphere is inspired globally, so we've got Beijing, we've got French, there's Moroccan and also the cuisine of food is very well rounded so there's a lot of different flavors typical things that people love to eat when they go to a restaurant so they always inject a little bit of that as well I would recommend and I would rate the sketch restaurant a 9 out of 10 so that was my review on the sketch restaurant let me know if you've ever been to a Michelin star restaurant in London or any fine dining experience I would definitely go back to the sketch restaurant again maybe change of seasons when the menu changes but it did definitely change my mind of fine dining in London it is really good if you like this video give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one